So the steps for solving for x inside a logarithm, or technically this would just be solving a logarithmic equation. Step one. We're going to simplify so that we have a single logarithm. Once you have a single logarithm, this is the hard step. You're going to use the definition of a logarithm to write your expression or your equation in exponential form. Once it's in exponential form, life is easy. You're going to be back to like math that you've solved before. So step three, you're just going to Solve for x. And step four, You're going to check for extraneous roots because you can't take the logarithm of a negative number. Everybody Everybody got this written down? Getting a little smaller off to the side. Okay. So solve log three nine x plus log three x equals four. We're solving for x inside of a logarithm. The question is do we have a single logarithm? No, we have two logarithms right now. So we have to use our log laws to simplify this to get a single logarithm. Do I have a log law that says a log plus a log? Yes. Adding two logarithms means I can multiply. So it'll be 9x times x, which will become 9x squared, equals 4. Relatively simple in this case. The logarithms were already on the same side, and so we could use a log law right away. Sometimes you'll have a logarithm on both sides of the equation. So you have to subtract it first to get them on the same side, and then use a log law. But in the end, you should get something that's a single logarithm equals a number. So now you can do the step that I highlighted with the green, because it's using a definition. This is what makes this step hard 
is because you're not actually doing something mathematically. You're just changing the form using the definition. In exponential form, the base is 3. The exponent is 4. The answer is 9x squared. That green asterisk step is the most important step because it changes it from something that you're not comfortable in solving, which is a log equation, into something more familiar. You've solved x squared equations tons. If you have just an x squared, what would you do? Well, you'd probably want to get that x squared by itself. Well, 3 to the 4 is 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, 81, equals 9x squared. If I wanted to get the x squared by itself, I'd divide by 9. And then if I wanted to get x by itself, I'd square root both sides, which would give me two answers, x equals 3 and x equals negative 3. So that's part 3. That's the easy part. You're solving for x, and it's just like math that you've done all along. There's never going to be something like, ooh, I've never solved for x like this. Sometimes it's a quadratic equation. You're going to have to factor and solve. You might have to use the quadratic formula, but you're going to solve for x using something you've already learned. Once you've solved for x, step four says check for extraneous roots. Right? The graph of any log graph, if I draw it off to the side here, any parent log graph looks like this, right? Notice that the domain of any log graph is x is bigger than 0. That means you cannot plug 0 into log. You cannot plug a negative number into a logarithm. It will cause a problem. Type it into your calculator. Try log of negative 5. It'll say error. Try log of 0. It'll say error. So. A logarithm is only defined, its domain is when x is bigger than or equal to 0. Okay? So that means we have to check these answers. Go back to your original equation. If you plug 3 into the first logarithm, what's 3 times 9? 27. Is that a negative number? No, it's fine. What about the second one? Plug in the 3. It's a positive number. So all we need to do is check if I plug in 3, do I ever put a negative number inside of a logarithm? In this case, the answer is no. This answer works. But if I try negative 3, my original equation, log 3 of 9 times negative 3 gives me log 3 of negative 27. You cannot take the logarithm of a negative number. I don't even have to check anymore. If you get a negative number once inside a logarithm anywhere, that answer is crossed out. Why do we go back to the original equation? If you didn't go back to the original equation, if you only went back to here, look what happens when I plug in negative 3 here. Negative 3 squared is positive 9. Positive 9 times 9 is positive 81. It looks like it works. In fact, if the question started here, then negative 3 would also be an answer. You'd have two answers. But since the question started here, when we plug in negative 3, it doesn't work. So solving a log equation, simplify so that you have a single logarithm. Once that's done, the hard step to remember, if you want to spend the next two minutes just memorizing step 2, once I get a single logarithm, I have to change it to exponential form because then I change it to a form where I can solve for x. Okay. Last thing it says is verify the solution. If you plugged in 3, log 3 of 27 plus log 3 of 3, 3 cubed is 27, so this will be 3. 3 of the 1 is 3, so that would be 1. 3 plus 1 is 4. It works. So verifying would just be plugging in your numbers, checking if the left-hand side equals the right-hand side. Okay, so try some of these. 
3, 4, and 9. 